Look at all you people in red. I'm so excited. Well, good morning. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are so glad to see. Look at all you people in red. I'm so excited. I'm excited to see those of you who are not in red, too. I see you, Michael. I have on pink. It's as close as I can get to red without looking like I'm sick. Um, so some of us are challenged that way, but thank you for that. Um, my name is Sandra Clay. I'm the pastor here at Cooks, and uh, we welcome those of you who are here um, in person, but also those of you who are joining us live stream. We're wearing red because today is... It is Pentecost, and we celebrate kind of the birthday of the church uh, as the Spirit fell on uh, those who were gathered waiting for the promise of God. And um, uh, we're going to tell not only that story, but tell our own story uh, today. So we're glad that you could uh, join us. A couple of things, just as a, a reminder, uh, check your bulletin. There are all kinds of meetings and things like that, but in particular... We ask for your uh, prayers. Uh, we have a district meeting. The, uh, the delegates to annual conference have a district meeting today uh, beginning at 3 o'clock. If you'll remember, that's the reason why we've shifted times for our regular May uh, administrative meetings. Um, uh, finance is at 530 uh, six o'clock, we'll begin our council meeting. We're going to eat. Uh, with one of the things we do the best. Uh, so we're going to add that to the mix at council. If you did not make a reservation to be able to eat, you are still welcome to come. We have a few extras, and look, we'll we'll share. We'll do what we need to. Uh, we want uh, to invite you not only to the council meeting, but in particular to hear new business. We've got a couple of things, um, primarily about general conference and another proposal that we want you to hear um, about an activity here for our church so we hope that you'll come six o'clock we'll be in friendship hall we'll be around round tables really friendly uh, nobody's going to ask you to speak uh, everybody there will have voice uh, so we hope that you'll come and join us uh, for that if you have any questions stop us before you leave the property this morning and we'll make sure that you um, uh, get all of that I do want to make one reference to the appeal that uh, SALT has made. They uh, only had one jar of peanut butter left, and that is uh, in their, uh, on their shelves, and so they're asking churches to contribute peanut butter um, this year. I think, um, are, you, are you up for a dare? Uh, I, 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 there's no reason why we can't send 100 pounds of peanut butter. There, there, there's no reason why. That's 100 jars right there. So uh, if you've not already brought your peanut butter, bring it. And uh, that way we've got our seniors have uh, an extra dose of uh, protein, uh, uh, an easy way for them to be able to be satisfied. So we hope that you'll, uh, that you'll do that uh, for us. It, it is a glory for us to be here together and to celebrate what the Spirit is doing in our lives individually but also as a church family. And there is much to celebrate uh, as we offer God the glory that he is due. We pray that your hearts are open and your hearts are warmed. Let's worship God.
Good morning. Good morning. God is good all, all the, the time. time. And all the time, God, God is, is good. good. Let us pray. God of Pentecost, we have gathered together in one place. Let us hear a sound coming from heaven like the rush of a mighty wind. Let your spirit fill this house. Send your tongues of fire on each of us, and we will sing your praises and do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now if you will stand as you are able for our call to worship, first hymn and affirmation of faith. The Spirit descends like a dove, bringing peace to unite the world in a just and caring community. The Spirit comes like a breath, bringing life to renew the people of God. The Spirit spreads like fire, bringing energy for witnessing to the love of God. Spirit of the living God, come to us and transform our lives by your power. Our opening hymn this morning is My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. You can find it on page 368 in your hymnal, and the words will also be on the monitor. Let us affirm our faith with a song of faith printed in your bulletins or found on the monitor. We sing of God the Spirit, who from the beginning has swept over the face of creation, animating all energy and matter, and moving in the human heart. We sing of God the Spirit, faithful and untamable, who is creatively and redemptively active in the world. The Spirit challenges us to celebrate the holy, not only in what is familiar, but also in that which seems foreign. We sing of the Spirit, who speaks our prayers of deepest longing and enfolds our concerns and confessions, transforming us and the world. We offer worship as outpouring of gratitude and all and a practice of opening ourselves to God's small voice of comfort, to rushing whirlwind of challenge, through music, art, sacrament, in community and solitude. God changes our lives, our relationships, and our world.
Our scripture reading this morning comes from the second chapter of Acts, and I'm supposed to read verses 1 through 4 and skip all of the names of the towns, but I think I'm going to read them anyway. (laughs) And then we'll go through verse 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs in our own languages. We hear them speaking all about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Bonnie. We do that to her, um, I confess, Um, every Pentecost, because she's the only one who won't say, no, I'm not doing it. I, I, I have a new um, experience that I want to share with you, I think. Uh, I'm just going to do it anyway. Pray for me if it doesn't make sense. But I think Pentecost is the day when we celebrate that the church and we uh, uh, has such life, life that the world would never be able to promise and fulfill enough that we, you get a tambourine and you get a tambour. We all get tambourines, don't you think? <laughs> Yes, it could be a Vestal Goodman moment for (laughs) all of us, if you know that name. She was, uh, yeah. Oh, what a a day um, today is for us. But I want you, it's not all joy. I I, I want us to be very clear um, to hear not just the description of what happened as the Spirit began to fall, but what also happened in the hearts of those who witnessed it. Jesus had promised power from God for those who follow him. Uh, Twice, as a matter of fact, before his ascension, the first time we find it recorded in John's gospel. Do you remember that beautiful passage that promises us peace in a time of grief uh, when we're uncertain about um, these difficult circumstances? He said in, the, in, a, in a not so long while, the world will see me no longer, but you will see me. 
when he promised <clears throat> that kind of power, it also implied a waiting on him. And then after Jesus' resurrection, we remembered last week before his ascension, you wait in Jerusalem, God's promise is for you. And you will know by this um, remarkable happening, power will come to you when the Holy Spirit falls. But Joel has been promising what Peter reminded them of. Peter, uh, Joel made that promise on God's behalf 400 years before they found themselves in that room when the Spirit fell. The book of Joel was written somewhere between 300 and 200 uh, BCE. That's about 400 years before Jesus finds himself preparing his 12 friends, followers, that it, it's going to get ugly before it gets better. But God promises and the Israelites, the very people of God, even those Gentiles who in the book of Acts we find come to the good news in droves. The evidence of the Holy Spirit's power has been symbolized in the same way. Not just that grand wind that you heard a, mom a, a moment ago. A wind that is heard but not felt, a wind that does not destroy, it simply reminds us that the breath of God, the spirit of God, and the winds around us are named the same, whether we're speaking in Hebrew, the ancients language, or those um, in Jesus' day when they chose to speak, uh, no matter their dialect, in the modern language of Greek. Breath and spirit and wind are named the same thing because of the power of that wind representing the Holy Spirit. But that pillar of fire that uh, divided in all kinds of tongues, dancing on your head and on your head as if we were in that place. Fire has always been from the beginning of our ages, the symbol of God's presence. You remember how he followed them, accompanied them in that pillar of fire by night. A promise, if you will, of God's presence, but also God's activity to protect them, to watch over them, to empower them, to enliven them as they made that long journey toward the promised land. Fire has always, to God's people, been a reminder and promise of the warmth that brings us life, purification that rids us of all of those things, attitudes, beliefs, practices that have no place in the presence of God. I just want to remind us, too, of the power of heat. It helps us relax and unfurl. It helps us expand larger than we could ever do for ourselves. And so I would, I would say, I, and I have great confidence in this truth, that this unquenchable fire changes us. Now, this is what I mean by unquenchable. Uh, the scriptures speak of it this way, though that word is not used. But I, there's not a one of us in this room whose eyes were not trained on Aiden this morning when he brought the light of Christ in for us. And you get, did a great job, brother. Here, here's the thing. When you were walking down the aisle, were you afraid even just a little bit that it was going to go out? Okay, so we got, we, we got one of these. Yeah, well, we were. We were afraid that it's going to go out. There's pressure, don't you know, once the Spirit of God has fallen on you and you're the one responsible for carrying the flame? How do I do that without it going out? That's not a really good sign uh, if, if it does. 
Isn't it just like our experience of God's own spirit promised to us? Yet when the we walk a little fast or the air comes on, the, a breeze begins to blow and we see that flame seem to be no longer. About the time we think, oh, it went out. Where is it? It flickered back, didn't it? We were all watch. We were all watching, Aiden. And again, you did a phenomenal job. The reason why the church forever has engaged in this kind of remembrance is that we are nothing without the presence of God, not just around us or before us, but within us. So when we when we celebrate with an acolyte bringing down the very light of Christ, we are also remembering that the light that goes before us has been sent to live within us and it changes us. Unquenchable fire, this fire of the Holy Spirit, changes the way we wait and watch. We talked about the waiting and how hard it is last week as we put ourselves in the place of those 11 who were left, who then quickly became 12 again when Matthias was chosen. I, I just want to say, in the waiting, and you've done some waiting, waiting for healing, waiting for hope, waiting for God's intervention, waiting for a solution, waiting for God's power to show itself in your life, waiting for you to feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. You've waited some in your life, just like God's people have. And in their waiting, it did not mean that regular life stopped. They had responsibilities to one another to keep up this room where they were still gathering, to meet one another for prayer, to talk about what God was doing in them where their questions still had root. Every time these disciples gathered, they were devoting themselves to the full work of waiting on God. It changes how we Wait. We don't wait with uh, anxious hearts, with minds doubting that we heard it right or that God is dependable. We wait and watch knowing that at the right time. We pray that it's not 400 years. However, I, I, I want to make a remark about that. If we were to think about how God might act in this nation of ours, how God's Holy Spirit might fall and make a difference in the places and in the processes that are our society here, we would have to wait. I, I, I don't know how to say it any other way, but 400 years from today, Looking backwards was way before we even became a nation. Have, have we been waiting for God to have his way that long? Or has the church given up? Ha have we stopped waiting on God and we're trying to fix things ourselves? It may be that we're not allowing the Holy Spirit to teach us to wait and watch differently. In this example, in this telling of the falling of God's Holy Spirit, it sure changed the way folks listened in that day. That really is one of the miracles. It's not just dancing flames on the heads of those gathered inside a room for prayer. The miracle was happening outside that place too because as the Spirit fell and those gathered in that place begin to tell the story of God, it's the people who were listening who heard a language that they could understand. They heard about the power and the glory of God. They heard the message, God's own truth, in a way that they could take it in 
and allow it to change them too. There were visitors, all those names that Bonnie read for us so beautifully. There were folks in Jerusalem for the holidays, for the holy days. And they didn't speak their languages often, if ever, in Jerusalem. But here they are, not having to translate in their own minds and for their own hearts, but God provided through those who allowed the Holy Spirit to take root within. They heard in a God language what they needed to hear to inspire them, to invigorate them, to enliven them. And this unquenchable fire also changes the way we speak. We learn to speak, we find boldness to speak in such a way that in telling God's story our way, telling it the way we have experienced his glory, how we know and stand on his truth, other people hear what they may not have ever understood before. I want you to turn in your Bibles. Eric doesn't have this on the screen. I, I want you to start bringing your Bibles if, if you don't bring them. I know we've got some in the pews, but I, I want you to read it in your own, own pages. Okay, so this is a freebie today. Do you know why it's important to read from a Bible that you're going to keep going back to again and again and again? Because we, are, we take in things spatially. Some of you have been using the same Bible so that when you imagine Psalm 23, you know which side of the page it's on because you've read it so many times. And that helps us um, envision what it means for God to speak over us. I want you to look in chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 is where we read this spirit. In chapter 2... Uh, go to verse 22, and this is Peter preaching. Now, before I read for you what he said, let's just remember that not too many days before this, his knees were shaking and he wasn't willing to say nothing because he was afraid that the Israelite leadership would do to them what they had done to Jesus. The only thing that has changed is he got to spend time with the risen Christ Remembering again all that God has promised and the Spirit has taken hold of him. You that are Israelites, listen to what I got to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders and signs that God did through him among you as you yourselves know. This man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. Now not only is Peter talking, he's poking the bear, if you get what I mean. Boldness, because of the power of God's own Holy Spirit, lets Peter say, but God. But God raised him up, having freed him from death because it was impossible for him, for Jesus to be held in death's power. Look down at uh, verses 32 and 33. This Jesus that God raised up and of that all of us are witnesses, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, that means the place of power and partnership at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you both see and hear. Peter is boldly saying, it wasn't just for the sake of you knowing who Jesus is. It is for us to be the evidence of that same Holy Spirit at work within us. And this final truth, verse 36, Therefore let the entire house of Israel, that is everyone who calls themselves a child of God, know with certainty that God has made Jesus, him, both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Whew. Now Peter said some bold things in his life shot his mouth off pretty regularly. 
and he had to backtrack a lot because he didn't know what he didn't know. But in this instance, he knew what he knew to say because of the Holy Spirit. That's the miracle, not just dancing flames and the sound of a wind that did not blow the curtains or their hair, preaching this boldly so that those could come to conviction and so salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's the miracle. This unquenchable fire changes the way we speak. And can I tell you that preaching like Peter is just the tip of the iceberg. Most of us are not going to find ourselves in a place like Peter did where the spirit kind of wells up within us the kind of sermon that will change the lives of thousands. But God is waiting for you to trust him enough to speak the truth in love to that family member, that co-worker, your classmate, your neighbor, a stranger in line whom you have witnessed struggling, needing a word of encouragement or challenge. The unquenchable fire of God's Holy Spirit changes us the way we wait and watch, the way we listen, the way we speak, and most profoundly as we are discovering in our study of the books of Acts, the way we love. Now this is not new news to you, but love requires a relationship. And Jesus says that that is the greatest command of all, to love. He is calling us into community and relationship. And this may be a hard word to hear, but there are many in the church today, not just this local church, but in the church universal, that there are a lot of folks who come to church and warm a pew and do not risk being in community. One, because they've been hurt before. We don't love very well sometimes. But when we give up on each other and we don't come back, there's no opportunity for us to grow. I'm going to come back to that idea of community for a minute, but our world can bear witness to what happens when you and I refuse to be a part, truly to be a part of community. Between the years 1990 and 2020, we're not going to say what happened in 2020, but in between those years, 20 years, the percentage of people who reside in the U.S. who say they have no real friend quadrupled. 50, a plus 50%. I mean, over half of our nation today would say, in answer to this question, there's not really one person even who knows me well. Now, part of this is a testimony to what happens when we would rather scroll on one of these and connect with people here. We've sacrificed community and want to brag about our connection to individuals or to groups of individuals. Our young adults are the ones who are struggling with this epidemic the most. But I want to say to those of us in this place who are middle-aged or older, we have known community in our life. And when we experience the loss of community, the death of a loved one, when we now live alone, This challenge to what it means to be in community is a life or death matter. Uh, Vivette Murphy is the former Secretary General of the U.S. and made quite a few waves in this assertion. In his studies, he became convinced, and no less than uh, four years ago, loneliness, he said, is a social epidemic, maybe even the number one health threat for people in the states today. Even saying this, that being lonely is worse for our health, physical, 
mental and spiritual health worth, worse than smoking 15 cigarettes a day, every day. It is not good that we would be alone. Where would you hear that first? God told us in the beginning of creation that it is not good that this one whom he created to bear his likeness ever be alone. He created a helpmate. Now, if you want to um, believe that that's just about creating men and women for each other, you go right ahead. But there is a larger truth there. It is not good for you to be alone. You need a friend. You need someone who is going to help you when you are failing. You need someone that will allow you to lean on them. And you need someone who will lean on you. Because you have what they don't have in that moment. We need each other. Now, you remember what I told you last week about Matthew, the tax collector? It seems like he's in cahoots with Rome, uh, which is a real offense to his Israelite brothers and sisters. And then Simon the zealot, the dagger man. He had friends who were slitting people's throats because they were in cahoots with Rome. This power of God's Holy Spirit calls us into community so that the Matthews and the Simon zealots of this world even find a way to call one another family. So our excuse about the church being filled with a bunch of Hypocrites, I, I don't know if you've heard or used that argument before about why you aren't involved or don't. I've I got family members who use it regularly. That, that may be true, but it's the only boat afloat that understands that it is the power of God that draws us together. This day begins the story. For you and me, it is not about what you bring to the table or what I bring to the table, but what we bring to the table in concert with God's Holy Spirit. And it will be no less in your life and in mine and in the lives of those whom we encounter in everyday life that tongues of fire will dance that people will hear the sound of a wind that is clearing the air. And you will be bold enough to be able to say, God loves you in a way that somebody else will hear it for the first time ever and trust that they are loved. And you too will be able to hear maybe from your diabolical opposite brother or sister, that you make a difference because of God's Holy Spirit. We celebrate the birthday of the church, but that is not a historical event where things are no longer happening the way they did on this day hundreds, thousands of years ago. I want you to close your eyes for just a moment. And I want you to be brave enough to answer these questions for yourself. That inner circle, Jesus, you know, had Peter and James and John. Do, do you have those intimates in your life who know you, who are willing to say, come on, you know God has you in the middle of this difficulty or... Come on, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Let's handle this with his power. Do, do you have those intimates in your life? If not, will you trust God to bring those folks to you so that you are not alone? And what about your bigger circle? You know, those 12 that may include a Matthew and a Simon or may being a Matthew, bring a Simon into your circle or vice versa. 
that small circle of about 12 that, oh, is up for anything because we trust that God is guiding us and leading us. What about your brothers and sisters in the faith? Do you stick around long enough to hear from them, to watch how God is moving in their life? Do you, do you stick around for fellowship and for study long enough that you walk this road of discipleship and service together? You know, in this tribe of Christians that encircles the globe, we celebrate and we mourn differently. We may even speak differently, but we don't talk about different things. Regardless of our language, we speak of the glory of God. Lord God, we pray that you would fall here on us. It would be really cool to see dancing flames. It would be uh, indescribable, to, indescribable to feel that wind blowing through, cleansing the air, making room for miraculous listening and speaking and especially loving. There is something we know you want to do in us and through us as well as for us. Forgive us for waiting for just our benefits. With your unquenchable fire, would you fall on us this day so that every time we feel the Spirit, we are ready to sing and to speak, to dance, and to accompany, and to bear witness to your glory. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and your precious Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Our hymn of response is actually a prayer of invitation. As we sing, Spirit of the Living God, I ask that you would sing from the very core of who you are. Uh, the words will be on the screen. More importantly, we pray that they're in your heart. Let's sing together. Dear God, we bring this offering to you today. With it, we worship you and give ourselves to you. Please accept our gifts and use them for the glory of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
this day. Uh, I want to call your attention to the prayer list. You can find it in your bulletin um, there in the back. Those uh, for whom we are um, praying and uh, have been in these last uh, days. Uh, I would share with you that Danny Ray is home after a surgical procedure this week and doing great. Uh, and so we celebrate uh, his uh, healing and uh, pray that he continue to do so. I also want to share this name with you too. Lydia Bloom uh, is known to uh, some of us. A young lady who lives down in DeKalb County was involved in a horse riding accident and um, uh, she fell and then the horse fell on top of her. So um, we've got a concussion and loose teeth and a couple of broken bones, but my girlfriend felt the very presence of God and has borne witness to that, how God is sustaining her. Uh, but she's got a long recovery, and being still is not one of her strong suits. So um, we laugh because it would not be ours either, and we certainly understand. Um, but um, we're praying for you, girly, uh, and for all of those that you see there. And there's not a one of us who has come into this time and this hour this place, whether you're present with us or you're at home, that doesn't carry um, a mixed bag. That's what life brings to us often. May we remember as we exercise the gift of prayer, calling on the name of God, that we have the privilege of doing that for ourselves, for other people. But what a glory it is when we can do that together as the family of God in this place. I invite you to pray with me, but to also pray with one another. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill us with your love. A love that is required to be in community with one another, but a love that will astound us, that will be evidence for the world to see of your very presence. Open our eyes to see the presence of God all around us in the stillness of this sacred hour, in the busyness and the noise of the streets that we drive and walk, in the joys and the celebrations of our lives, but also in the tragedies and the struggles that break our hearts. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, and comfort those who grieve. Grant them the peace that only you can bring. Stir within us a, a trust in life beyond death as we ponder the mysteries of Christ's resurrection and the hope that we have in new and everlasting life. Come, Holy Spirit, and bring wholeness to the sick. Strengthen those who are weak, heal the wounded and the broken in every way imaginable, and give rest to us who are weary. Come, Holy Spirit, inspire our warring world to seek peace. Inspire us to love our enemies, to put away our weapons, to remember the price paid for our freedom, to care for those who have served. Would you not only inspire us to live this boldly, but would you fill us so that our power is your power to work for a day where we can say that peace is here. Come, Holy Spirit, and ignite a fire in our bones, a passion for justice that cannot be quenched until all of your children are loved, until no one is marginalized or oppressed or forgotten, until everyone has the opportunity to thrive, until the world is transformed and renewed. Come, Holy Spirit, and revive your church. Liberate us from complacency and apathy. Inspire us with Christ's vision for a world reborn. Help us to recognize our gifts for ministry and to use them in service of others. Transform our hearts and our minds. Fill us with love that overflows. 
and remind us that there is no greater calling than to love you with all that we are and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Gracious, holy God, give us a glimpse of your kingdom emerging around us, drawing us into the new things you are doing in the world. It is for your kingdom that we now pray, filled with your spirit, using the words that Jesus taught us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And the power and the glory forever. Oh my. Okay, so the song that Rachel played uh, for the offertory that you responded so powerfully to, I don't know if you know the words. Uh, there, but you're going to be really glad we didn't make you sing those because, I mean, it is an audacious prayer. Every time I feel the Spirit, I'm going to shout. Every time I feel the Spirit, I'm going to pray. Every time I feel the Spirit, I'm going to dance. I, I'm going to move. I'm going to do what you are moving me, inspiring me, telling me, showing me to do. Y'all, we don't do that very well. Because somebody might be looking at us. Now, what we're about to sing is in the same vein. But I want you to mean it with all that you have. I hope that you do. It's our wish, our prayer, not just for what we feel before we go back out into our day if you're leaving us now, or what we experience as we go to study together. It is about letting God have his way within us. If you feel that something has begun today that God is authoring in you, we implore you to let him have. He is trustworthy and true. Let it happen. And if you want a brother or a sister to pray with you, to pray over you, we got plenty of folk who will do that. Would you stand as you are able and let's sing together the spirit song. Benefit. 
pray that God fill us so that we listen and we wait and we watch and we speak. You see, you see how hard it is to be in community? You've got to change your spot. You've got to hold hands and hug. But, well, there are some of you in this place who have ready mates. <laughs> <laughs> not talking about you. I'm not talking about you. Now, Michael even owned it. Okay. It was me. It's okay. Now you do because you're holding it. Nah. Yeah, yeah. Because you are loved. Amen.